The creation of this video was made possible thanks to my supporters over on Patreon. If you want these videos to stay completely free, then consider clicking the link in the description to check it out. Patreon is a membership site that I set up to get a more sustainable income stream, and it basically helps me focus on creating more high quality videos for you. If you sign up today, you'll get behind the curtain rewards such as an insider look at how I create these videos, early access to YouTube videos one week ahead of time, and much much more. If you sign up before October 1st, you're in the contest to win a free beginner guitar. So click the link below and sign up now. Abbey Road is the 11th studio album by the Beatles. It features the last recordings in which all four Beatles members participated, and like many of their previous albums, it provides a versatile blend of genres like pop, blues, and progressive rock. Although certain parts of the recording process were enjoyable for the members, the cracks that eventually made them disband had already started to appear. John Lennon made a private decision to leave the band before Abbey Road was released, and McCartney left the next year. Although an immediate commercial hit, it received mixed reviews from some critics to begin with. Some commenting on how it sounded inauthentic and too artificial production-wise. But with time, it's become one of the favorite Beatles records amongst critics and fans. Since the album celebrates its 50th anniversary this month, I thought it would be a great opportunity to look back at the album's background history, recording process, and album art to reinvigorate our appreciation of what the Beatles created. This is Remembering Beatles Abbey Road. The Beatles were initially set to record an album called Get Back. But because of tense and unpleasant recording sessions, Paul McCartney suggested to their producer George Martin that the group get together to make an album like they used to do it. With the recording of the White Album and Get Back, the guys simply didn't get along. McCartney and Lennon didn't want to work with each other. Something that led to McCartney taking leadership of the band for some time. Lennon spent more time making music with his soon-to-be wife Yoko Ono, and in general, the band recorded a lot of their music individually through overdubs instead of real-time recording as a full band. Now, this changed during the Abbey Road sessions. As George Harrison mentioned in an interview, quote, we did actually perform like musicians again, end quote. But the friendly banter and good vibes in the beginning soon took a left field move when John Lennon brought his girlfriend Yoko Ono to the sessions. She became a permanent presence and clashed with the other members. Even when the couple were involved in a car accident in the summer of 69, Lennon installed a bed in the studio so she could be there while recovering. It wasn't just Yoko's presence that was troublesome though. Lennon did not like how the album turned out to be. In his eyes, he wanted to create an album with traditional, distinct and unrelated songs. McCartney and Martin, on the other hand, wanted to create a more experimental and thematic piece along the lines of Sgt. Pepper. They wanted to incorporate more progressive and overarching elements such as a medley. Because they couldn't settle on an agreement, Lennon suggested that they'd put all of his songs on one side of the album and McCartney's songs on the other. Although we don't have any clues to how they resolved this issue, the album contains a clear mix of Lennon and McCartney songs on both sides of the vinyl release. After Abbey Road was released, they re-examined the Get Back project and kept on working on it. They changed the name to Let It Be, and this would be the last Beatles album to be released, although the band had partially broken up at this point. By September of 69, Lennon had formed the Plastic Ono Band, partly because the Beatles had rejected his song called Turkey. Harrison started to work with a myriad of other artists in the end of 69, while McCartney took time off to spend with his daughter. Now, Abbey Road was recorded with a piece of brand new recording technology, the 8-track reel-to-reel tape machine. 
For previous records, they recorded onto four tracks and then bounced the tape to fit in more instruments. But with more tracks, they could record multiple layers of instruments more easily. Another notable part of this album is the use of the Moog synthesizer. In songs like Because, Maxwell's Silver Hammer, and Here Comes the Sun, the Moog plays a very central part in creating and supporting the melody. Other times it was used to create more atmospheric elements, such as in I Want You, She's So Heavy. Here, Lennon uses the Moog's white noise effect to simulate the sound of a wind blowing. It wasn't just the new recording technology and instruments that made the album sound different from previous Beatles albums though. Ringo Starr mentioned in an interview how he used the Tom Tom drums noticeably more on here. He said it was, quote, Tom Tom madness. I went nuts on the toms, end quote. Another brand new piece of recording tech was also used for the first time here, a solid state transistor mixing desk, the TG12345MK1. This further helped the band with overdubbing and creating a somewhat softer sound compared to the recording desks that they used in the past. <laughs> The album artwork is also something to pay attention to here. The album artwork of Abbey Road has gone down in history as one of the most iconic of all time. But the band's label, EMI, was a little bit hesitant to approve it at first. It was their first album without a title and band name on the cover. White Album was released one year prior, and although controversial and inventive in its own sense with its blank white cover, it at least had the band's name on it. But this was just a picture of the band members walking across the street. Art director John Kosh later explained that, quote, We didn't need to write the band's name on the cover. They were the most famous band in the world. End quote. It was McCartney that had the original idea for this cover from a sketch he'd made. The shooting took place on August 8th, 1969, right outside of EMI studio on Abbey Road. Photographer Ian McMillan was given 10 minutes to take the photo. He was standing on a stepladder while a policeman held up traffic from behind. EMI's worries about not including the band name and album title on the cover proved to be meaningless after their release. The album was a massive hit, and the cover is probably one of the most recreated ones throughout history. Year after year, avid Beatles fans traveled to the pedestrian crossroad to cross it themselves and take a photo. By the next album cycle and the release of Let It Be, the band had already broken up. The members had grown increasingly hostile to each other because of artistic differences, and they simply didn't function as a band anymore. Let It Be was intended to be released before Abbey Road under the working title Get Back, and since much of the material in fact was recorded before Abbey Road, some fans and critics argue that Abbey Road should be referred to as their final album, and Let It Be the penultimate. From here on, the members went their separate ways. Harrison joined his friend Eric Clapton in the Blue Eyed Soul and Rock and Roll Band, Delaney and Bonnie and Friends. Starr went on to create his first solo record with producer George Martin. McCartney became depressed and started drinking for a brief time, but soon got better and wrote music alone as a solo artist. Lennon did publicity stunts and continued his career with his wife in the Plastic Ono Band with his new purpose of spreading the message of peace. Now at the end here, I want to say that Abbey Road is an amazing record. Although it's not one of my personal favorites of the Beatles, it's hard to deny masterpieces like Here Comes the Sun, Come Together and Something. It's definitely one of the Beatles albums where George Harrison really shines alongside Revolver, where he also contributed a handful of songs. I'd love to go more in depth into the sound of the guitar and the playing style on this album, but we'll have to save that for a future video instead. If you want to see some behind the scenes material for this video, check out my Patreon account by clicking the link below. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.